LiveStorm is a less known webinar software, but it could be the perfect one for you. In this LiveStorm review, we'll take a look at the webinar registration conversion funnel, the live webinar features, the analytics dashboard, and finally, we'll take a look at the pricing. So let's go. LiveStorm is mostly for live webinars and you can add multiple sessions, making it a live recurring webinar. It is possible to create an automated session as well with this automation builder. You can add a sequence of automations that can happen. Uh, for example, I can start a video at a specific time and it will start two minutes after uh, the event has started and I can go so on. This is an example of an automated uh, webinar session. The, the problem with this is that I can only add a video and after the end of the event, I can redirect my uh, attendees to a different page. The problem with this is I can't add any kind of interactions to it. I can't add offers, I can't add polls. So the automated webinar feature here is quite basic. Customizing the webinar registration page is broken into To edit the information on the webinar registration page, you will have this text box editor here, which is uh, rich in features. You can add product images. You can add a YouTube video, for example. The problem is just you can't really resize it. You can also add your own webinar registration uh, questions. A unique feature here is that you can only allow registration with work emails. That means people can't register with Gmail, Outlook or Yahoo email. The third part of the webinar registration page is under the design. And here you can customize uh, the colors, the background colors, the button colors and so on. And you can even add your own logo. To preview the webinar registration page, how it would look like for the attendee, you can click on the registration page right here on the right hand side. This is how the webinar registration page would look like for the uh, uh, registrants. And there's a product image, I can add uh, the product video and so on, and I can customize all those fields. The registration form will pop up after the uh, registrants will uh, enter their email. So this is how the webinar registration form would look like for the registrants. Pretty easy and simple to grasp. Coming back to the design for a second, the design that you de define here will also be reflected on the webinar emails, the reminder emails. So let's take a look at that. What I don't like about the webinar reminder emails on Livestorm is that there are only two possible options, a one hour reminder or a five minute reminder. And you can't add or you can't edit uh, when it, it will be sent. What I do like is that after the webinar, you can customize a different email for the ones who attended and the ones who didn't attend your webinar. And it's really easy to preview how the webinar reminder emails would look like for the attendee just by clicking here. If you want to edit the contents, you can do that really easily as well. So the webinar emails are quite well done. The user interface is really intuitive and smooth here. So that's a good thing. The last thing you want to configure before going into the live webinar room is the webinar room settings. You can enable the chat, uh, enable the questions, the Q&A, and enable the polls tab. So this is how uh, the attendees would see the configurations and the, the options uh, during the live webinar. However, you can't pre-configure the polls that you want to launch during the webinar. You would actually have to go inside the webinar room before the webinar starts to pre-configure the polls that you want to launch. So let's do that. Here I am in the live webinar room uh, in live storm. The webinar hasn't started yet. I haven't clicked the start webinar button, but I'm just here because I want to pre-configure the polls uh, so that I just have them as draft polls before I launch the webinar. I've set up my poll. It's in draft right now and it's ready for the live. Let's launch the webinar. As I'm launching the webinar, it gives me a nice little countdown before the webinar starts so I can uh, fix myself. And we're live. Under the polls, I can easily launch the poll that I had pre-configured earlier by publishing it. And attendees are able to vote as you'd expect. During the live webinar, you can see all the attendees, who are they, what are their job titles and so on. And here are the questions that your attendees have asked you. 
the cool thing is that they can upvote the, the questions that they want answered the most. So at the end of the webinar, typically, you can take the most requested questions and answer them live by clicking start live answer. And if you're done answering, you can just click stop answering. Easy as that. For the less popular questions, you can type a written answer or your moderator can do that for you. So you, you'll know that you can answer all the questions either live or by uh, typing a written answer. Just like this. One slight downside for Livestorm, in my opinion, is that there is no way to inject the slideshow right into the platform. If you want to share your slides, you would have to share the screen and basically share your PowerPoint presentation and run the presentation on your uh, computer. The problem with screen sharing your slides is that the quality of the text on the slides will depend on the video quality. If the slides would be launched directly from the platform, the quality would be higher. When I'm presenting my slides, and at any point I want to emphasize something on the slides, I can maximize my webcam to explain something to the audience so my audience can focus on me talking and when I'm done emphasizing the point, I can go back to the slides to maximize the slideshow. This is just directing the attention of your attendees and it's a good presentation tip for you. If at any point during your webinar you would want to share a video, you can do that by uh, sharing a media. You can share either a YouTube video link or an uploaded video. One useful feature on Livestorm that helps you while you're presenting is that you can mute all the notification sounds and actually hide the chat bar so you can solely focus on delivering your webinar contents. The entire webinar will lead up to a point where you want to make your sale, to make your case and to present your offer. You can do that uh, under actions to send a call to action to all your attendees. The call to action feature is not that good actually, because first of all, you can't add a product image at all, but you can add a button. So let's do that. Let's send the call to action. And the call to action would look like something like this for the attendees. A huge problem with this is that it's a pop-up and the attendees can dismiss this pop-up like this. Now, if they've dismissed the pop-up, there is no way to bring it back up again. And that is a huge problem. Webinar sales don't happen like this. It's a steady process of convincing and proving your, the value of the product or the course or whatever you're selling. And you're starting to win over the audience gradually throughout the webinar. Instead, you want the offer to stay visible for the attendees while you're giving testimonials, giving uh, selling points, and trying to convince them why buying this product or this uh, course or whatever you're selling, why it's the best decision they'll make this year. But presenting the offer in such a pop-up way is not really consistent with the way sales in webinar really actually happens. Right after the webinar finishes, the same webinar replay recording would automatically start. And for all that, all the polls and all the people attended will be visible, as well as all the questions that were asked. A really good feature during the webinar replay is that people can ask new questions while they're watching the webinar replay, and those questions would reach you. This is really good for engaging the people who couldn't attend the webinar live, but are just watching the replay and still want to ask questions. One problem with the webinar replay recording is that the call to actions that you launched during the live webinar will not be launched during the replay. What you can do is if you are also in the replay page, you can launch the call to action for your replay attendees. You would have to customize the text again and send the call to action. And whoever is watching the replay at that moment will see that pop up. This is a really strange way of engaging or making a sale to the webinar replay attendees. This is something that is not thought through in my opinion. If you as the host are coming to the replay page, there is the download recording button. This is only visible to you as the webinar host. Under the people's tab, there is the webinar analytics dashboard, which gives you the most important information about your webinar registration and your attendance uh, statistics. You can basically see how many people visited the registration page and how many actually registered. So this gives you the registration conversion rate. You can also see 
and you can see their answers to the registration form. You can also enable some more columns to get some more information like the city and the number of engagements. And for example, the sources, the UTM parameters and the browsers and operating systems that they used to join. One important insight that you can learn is the progression of connected attendees during the webinar. You can learn when did the people leave your webinar and when did they join? When were the peak times and maybe there was something you said or, or a point where people started leaving the webinar. This is where you can learn it and improve upon your future webinars. You can download as CSV file, the, the registrants email list, the, the chat messages that happened during the live and the, the questions to make a personalized follow-up with the people who asked the questions. Livestorm is essentially a free webinar software. However, there are some really restricting limitations on the free package. You can only have up to 10 registrants per webinar and only 20 minute webinar sessions. It will just cut off right after 20 minutes. If you want to remove those restrictions, you would have to go with the webinar premium plan. The Livestorm webinar premium would cost at least $109 per month and it would include only one host. For each additional host, it would cost another $109 per month. The premium package automatically includes 100 attendees as default. You can increase the attendee limit to 250 and then it would cost you $218 per month. You can go all the way up to 1000. If you opt to go with the yearly subscription, it would be cheaper for you. Let's summarize the live store pros and cons. The most important downsides are you can't schedule the polls and the offers in the automated webinar sessions. You can't change the webinar registration page layout. There are only one hour and five minute webinar email reminders and you can't add new ones. There are no slideshow injections. You would have to screen share your slideshow from your computer. Polls have to be pre-configured just before the webinar starts and your call to action offers have to actually be configured during the live webinar. When an attendee closes the call to action pop-up, they can't bring it up again. The call to action that happened during the live webinar will not be launched during the webinar replay. And finally, the free plan is not actually that useful for hosting live webinars because of its restrictions. So it's more like an unlimited trial. The most important pros for Livestorm are, first, you can host automated webinar sessions. The registration page is easy to customize and it has a really clean UI. You can add custom questions to the registration page. You can enable the only company emails feature so only people with their company emails can register. You can add a product image and a product video to your registration page. Editing the webinar reminder emails is really easy with a nice preview and the design is very beautiful. During the live webinar, attendees can ask questions and upvote on each other's questions. During the live webinar, you as the host can launch videos straight from YouTube or from file that you previously uploaded. The webinar replay recording is automatically shared with all the attendees and you can craft a separate message to the ones who attended and the ones who didn't. Even during the webinar replay, people can ask new questions. The webinar analytics dashboard has a clear conversion statistics and attendance tracking. And finally, Livestorm has a free webinar plan that lets you host unlimited webinars. I encourage you to try out Livestorm for yourself to see if it fits your specific needs. Use the link in the description to get a free access to Livestorm right now. If you are not impressed with Livestorm's uh, webinar features, uh, check out this review here or this review here for a better alternative. These are detailed, honest webinar software reviews that I'm doing here on YouTube to help you choose the best webinar software for you. So check them out and thanks for watching. See you next time.